Hey, in this video, we're gonna talk about the difference between junior and senior UX designers. If we can get through it with this fucking bird outside going crazy. No, look, take it. There's a bird right there. <laughs> fucking bird! <laughs> We're also gonna talk about how to go from being a junior UX designer to being a senior UX designer. All right, let's go. He does the thing here with the... <clears throat> I think the is bird the is birds? okay. It's, there's a bird, but it's There fine. are birds everywhere. Hey, I'm Jonathan. I've been a UX designer for the last 10 years here at AJ and Smart. Hi, my name is Tim. I'm a product design director at AJ and Smart, and I've been working in the design industry for over 10 years. Mm. In this video, what we're going to be doing is kind of going through, well, first of all, we're going to be describing, I guess, what we would consider the difference between junior and senior, how we kind of define that at AJ and Smart. We'll also go through some uh, company job ads and, and talk about kind of what we see as common themes across junior and senior. And then we'll talk about sort of what we would say are some good paths to moving up the chain, you know, from junior to mid-level to senior. And make sure you leave a comment down below. Let us know what situation you are in. Let us know if you're a senior. Let us know if you're a junior and also let us know what your opinion for moving up the ladder in terms of career is. We'd love to hear that as well in the comments. Okay. So Tim, what would you say is the difference between, like what, like some differences between like a baby junior yeah. and yeah. A, an adult? <laughs> yeah. they're, not all they're not always babies. Sometimes they are. I would say one of the main differences is the amount of responsibility that you have. It's, uh, it's not necessarily the skill as a designer, because as a designer you are just expected to have a skill. And of course you will get better, but it's also um, the ability to prioritize right. I mean, this is something that I, I, I often see juniors struggling with. And I'm, I mean, I know for sure that I also struggled with this when I started out working. Um, it's something that comes with experience and I think it's these two things, responsibility, being able to prioritize and um, almost like being able to manage yourself as well. Yeah, I think that's a really good, that's what I would say as well. I would say that a junior is not someone who you can just kind of say, here's the basic task and then let them go and do it. Um, because you, you probably have to be a lot more specific with the priorities and with the exact individual tasks. And you do need to, at, at least at AJ and Smart, when we're talking about a junior, even though we give people a lot of responsibility here, uh, the senior would always check up on the work of the juniors before it would go to a client because the junior may not have the full context of the product that we're working on. And also being realistic, they haven't had usually haven't had enough experience in the industry to be able to spot patterns of how to deal with clients and how to deal with specific types of projects. A junior might come in with really excellent visual design skills, but not really know how to, you know, maybe solve a product problem. So like if a client comes to us and says, hey, you know, we need to increase the engagement in our app the uh, junior designer would not be expected to figure that all out by themselves. A senior UX designer would kind of figure out the blueprint and the junior designer would be expected to make that blueprint, kind of execute that blueprint within a tight scope of work. So um, the way I would look at it is that a junior designer um, doesn't necessarily have all the skills required to take on an entire project by themselves um, and really hand that off to a client and get it signed off. That's kind of a messy mm. answer, but that, that's, I guess, the way we would treat it. And just adding to this, I think uh, one, one thing that a lot of junior designers are also struggling with is um, kind of like seeing the bigger picture. So it's, uh, they're very focused on specific things, but they don't necessarily think about like the questions and challenges that are connected to this thing that they're working on. And this is sometimes why they come up with something that looks really cool, really fancy. But then when you actually ask them a couple of questions, like how would that work in that specific case? Or how would a user, like what would a user do when, when they do this? Or like how would they interact with that thing? Usually they don't really have any answers because yeah. they haven't thought about <clears throat> these questions. And this is, um, uh, I think this is this is completely normal and it's something that you just build up over the years, I think. Yeah, I've seen cases where, you know, I'll get a design back from a, a junior and it will look really great, but then I'll be like, okay, so there's three different button colors on this page um, and there's like three or four different button styles. Can you tell me 
what is the reason behind this being purple and this being just an outline? Um, and why does the uh, why is the animation uh, like an, uh, a swipe from the left overlay when you tap this link, or a swipe from the bottom overlay when you tap this link? Because you, it looks cool. Because it looks cool. Because it looks cool. <laughs> yeah. And, and, or because they've seen it in another app, but don't know what their design system is behind it. Um, so often, I would say that a junior designer, at least we don't expect them on day one to know all of these things, and it's sort of their job to understand these things while they're doing the work. Uh, as a junior designer, you might still dabble in, a, you know, like motion graphic gra design. Yeah, motion like graphics art, yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, and then you find out what you actually like. And, and this is kind of like the path you're, you're going, yeah. going on then. That's a really, really good point. I think that's what people don't realize uh, when they're juniors is that the worst thing you can do is to not understand your skill level and to, to over like to kind of overblow it because the thing is senior designers notice that immediately even if they one thing that i notice that happens actually is sometimes a junior designer will go into a very large corporate mm. that has very little design knowledge and this junior designer will get promoted within this company to being like a senior and as soon as that junior designer moves to more of a real product environment if they want to continue their career they're knocked back down to junior or they're like holy crap I thought I was a senior but actually I'm really just starting again and even in, even within AJ and Smart I've seen that happening um, you know where some designers on some teams even get the feeling oh I've been told that I'm actually mid-level now but when the when they talk to then the senior level designers at AJ and Smart it's like no, you still have another year and a half to really understand what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So I think that in like kind of acknowledging that you are a junior designer and embracing the yeah. fact that you can ask questions all the time is a good thing. The junior designers who don't move forward are the ones who are protective about their skill level. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, I don't want to show people that I don't know stuff. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to kind of just do my own thing and not ask questions. Just but make stuff up. Right? Just make stuff up. <laughs> I mean, the interesting thing to me is also that when you're a junior, you are really, uh, you really want to not be a junior anymore. Yeah. Right? So this is why sometimes you see people uh, kind of like promoting themselves when they, you know, like they work for like two years as a freelancer, uh, sorry, as in, in a company, then they become freelancers and suddenly they're like senior creative director or something yeah. like that for That's something so super specific. and. The, I, I mean, honestly, I, I think it's totally understandable because you want, like, this. it actually shows that you have ambition. Yeah. But at the same time, you have, like, looking back at my own career, like, the, the time I spent as a junior designer, when I co com completely resented being called a junior, was actually one of the, like, the the most interesting times of my yeah. career because this is when nobody really has like these ex insanely high expectations of you yeah. and you can still experiment and branch <laughs> out and try different things and people you it's also way easier to delight and surprise people as a junior yeah. if you're going to your boss and you tell them hey look I made this prototype uh, you didn't tell me to do this but I just did this on my what? free time and they're just like blown away yeah. so let's maybe have a quick look at the uh, some junior roles and job descriptions and what they would actually say and let's see if we agree with them. So let's take a look at this one, uh, junior UX designer here. In London, uh, at source, 35K a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, your responsibility as a UX digital designer will include building website prototypes, design and wireframes using the latest techniques, working closely with development resources to achieve the best possible results in web projects from conception right through to delivery. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's see. That's also interesting. Keep abreast of the latest development trends. Mm. So this sounds like it's very, uh, it's a very technical UX yeah. uh, position here. So probably working in like an actual um, development team. Um, so here, the software necessary you must have experience of working with Sketch, Envision, Adobe XD, and Adobe Creative Suite. I mean. I would say um, this is pretty much a standard thing. This I honestly, job could describe anything. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's um, like nothing in, I mean, maybe this is interesting, experience with sitemaps and wireframing. Mm -hmm. I remember the first time I did a wireframe, I knew I knew the term wireframe, yeah. and I knew I could use OmniGraffle. I, I don't even know if that's around <clears throat> anymore to do that, and I just loved doing these wireframes. And I, I went, I, I, I don't know, like, 
the fact like the the granularity i put into these is was pretty much on a like screen design level yeah so they looked really really cool <laughs> um and nobody told me to do that but uh, it's it's kind of like one of, that was one of my first steps into ux design and i think um maybe maybe let's take a look at uh, i would say that one, one is the, the good thing here is that we're sort of describing what a junior designer does but most of these ads probably won't so this is interesting because this one is... Uh, They're just talking about themselves there. Yeah. So this one is interesting because this is a junior graphic designer. So it's uh, already... But they have to be... It says you'll be working on UX. Yeah, exactly. So you exactly. can just tell often people who are writing these job ads... They have don't, no idea what they... They don't know how to write job ads. And honestly, we don't either. That's yeah. normal. So that's somehow sometimes where you, have, you as the person applying kind of needs to do the work. Actually, let me move on maybe. Let's to go to the, the Economist one. There's one down here. Oh, Economist. The Economist there. Ah. Yeah, oh, Junior yeah. Customer Action. Experience Designer. Okay, that's interesting. And it says here you will contribute. So you're not actually <coughs> doing it, you're just contributing. Yeah. Form design specifications or briefs, ideate design and prototype end-to-end -end journeys, experiences and new features that can be validated with users, working with different levels of fidelity as appropriate. I think it's uh, that's uh, pretty much what... <laughs> Even seniors. Yeah, are yeah. Doing. I mean, so, the well, thing, but maybe, good. but maybe, but maybe this is actually a good point because when I remember when I uh, I started out as a designer fresh out of university and looking for jobs, I thought like, this is impossible. Like, yeah. I I can't do anything that's on there. Yeah. How am I supposed to find a job? Like, I don't know what uh, like. Like, what do they expect me to do? Like, do like a complete website from start yeah. to finish? It sounded to me like that. When I talk to them, I mean, usually, usually you meet with like a creative director or somebody like that, and then you show them their your portfolio, and usually the portfo you're really proud of your portfolio. Uh, looking back, my portfolio was so bad; it was so horrible. Like I wouldn't have hired myself today. I have to, I have to admit that. Looking back, my portfolio was so bad; it was so horrible. Like I wouldn't have hired myself today. I have to, I have to admit that. Um, because I, it was just this mess of like you know like different creative projects. Because yeah. this, the, I was still at the stage where I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do. But the nice thing was this really experienced creative director asked the right questions. And I mean, I also bullshitted a little bit. Like he asked me, can, can you code websites? And I'm like, yeah, of course I can code websites. <laughs> obviously you can code websites. Of, obviously, who can't? <laughs> okay, so that, I think that's, I think we've seen basically that the, the ads are pretty general. But uh, one thing I would say, and I think you mentioned that also, Tim, is like, I would almost say it doesn't matter what it says in the ad. Yeah. Like I would still apply, even if it says that you have to know HTML and CSS, and I didn't, I would still apply. I always still applied. I would just look at, oh, they're looking for a junior designer. I know the basic definition of yeah. that. I would always still apply. So I think that I, you shouldn't be turned off by these very, of course, they, you know what? The people writing the job ads are not the people who are doing the hiring. I mean, also they often. want to have their dream candidate that yeah. actually can do everything, yeah. is, is paid on a junior uh, level, but is basically as skilled as a creative director. They never and, turn up anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you never find these people. Yeah, like honestly, we write, like so how job ads are written are they copy and paste them from other job ads that's how job ads are written it's like whatever you know that no yeah. one really knows where the original stone tablet job ad came from but i think that uh, i think that's how it happened <laughs> what would you define as a senior designer yeah uh tim yeah being being skilled uh on you know like a like a craft ba base mm -hmm. is definitely still important but you're taking almost like a step back and looking at things from a kind of like a broader perspective. You have to be able to communicate your decisions. You have to be able to talk to clients and also have like the necessary business etiquette to talk to clients without making them angry. That's a, that's a really big one that yeah. no one thinks about. It's also something that nobody really teaches yeah. you in any kind of like design school or something. Like how, that. how would you learn? Do you think you just can learn that from experience? Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, I learned by making a lot of mistakes as a junior where a, a senior took me to the side and said this thing that you just said in the presentation that was really bad. When you just spat on that, the floor? Yeah, I was yeah, just don't spat in their face and just <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't, <laughs> I don't respect this company. No, um, I, I think it's it's a it's a necessary skill, and you will you will build it up the more you you know like work with clients. And as a junior, you don't necessarily 
you you are not necessarily invited to these client meetings, and you should actually also be grateful for that because it's also shielding you from a lot of harsh harsh criticism that a senior designer definitely has to take in yeah. without feeling uh, you know like personally insulted. So you should you should be able to handle negative client feedback as well, and also like in your head already processize like let's like like unwrap this kind of like crit criticism I'm getting now like what is like the actual thing now that is the problem and how can I fix that being able to you know like just <clears throat> being being able to have like several things going on at the same time without freaking out yeah I think that's that's uh, very important because you you need to be able to if I if I look at a normal week for you like Tim will be prototyping coming up with concepts also coordinating the project as a, as a project manager, but also then being the person that the client is talking to, and also being the person who's arranging the design team to make sure it's the right team. So a senior, whereas a junior would be just one of those team members doing the tasks that have been given out, the senior is the person who has to invent the tasks, create them, mm -hmm. work with the clients to figure out what those tasks even could be. And I think that's a huge difference between yeah. this. It's two completely different worlds. Maybe uh, one interesting thing we didn't talk about yet is this jumping between different companies, because that's yeah. usually how you like it. I think it's very rare to, you know, like have your boss come to you, your junior designer, and then you're now mid-level because yeah. that also means they have to pay you more. Yeah. Uh, and they are not going to do that. I, I also, it's not it's not, you know, like because they're, you know, mean or... I'm the boss, he's just, he's just trying to be nice. <laughs> they're, usually, they're usually very intelligent and uh, they'll have, have their reasons. <laughs> I think they're extremely intelligent. Yeah. No, but it's just, they also don't think about that. They, they're just happy that you are, you know, like you're doing a good job, you're dependable and all of that stuff. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like your responsibility to be ready to make that jump. And it's, I mean, in the kind of like agency industry, it's usually by it's just switching to another agency, making a clear break. Uh, talking like because you kind of like have a legacy in that company and people will maybe have a tough time you know thinking about okay he's not a junior anymore I shouldn't give him or her these tasks anymore like they can actually now take on more stuff yeah um, yeah I mean just something to think about maybe because I, I know that all my except in this company actually all my uh, kind of like promotions came from me just moving from from agency to agency. Mm, that's very interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, so that's maybe also why it takes so long to actually get to a senior because you actually have to stay in these companies yeah. for like two years, three years because you also you can learn from. We're we're back to talking about juniors. Doesn't but, matter. <laughs> so the thing is, you can learn from being exposed to different work environments as yeah. well. And I think it's not something you can have a shortcut or hack for. I yeah. mean, it's oh, it's. oh wait, actually, there is a shortcut. I would say, and that mm -hmm. is working at an agency where you can be part of a lot of different projects. Yeah. And, and even, even some agencies do um, things where they'll plant a design team inside a corporate environment. Yeah. Okay, so let's actually look at some of the tips for how you would go from a junior to a, uh, to a senior or junior, mid-level senior. Um, and, and I guess these are just kind of our own you know, subjective tips, but they've worked for us and we've seen them working for other designers. So one, I mean, I'm, I, they're not in any order. I'm just, let's maybe just say some stuff. I think one thing for me, there's like obvious things. There's like the, the foundational stuff that everyone has to do. This is called hygiene factors. It just means if you're not doing these, you're not going to get forward anyway. So there's no point in trying the other stuff. And I would say, starting off the basics, you do need to be interested in the topic and you need to be interested enough to read, listen to podcasts, look at the tech news, look at the new patterns, understand the sort of design world you're working in. Um, you need to have an interest enough to do that on in your spare time, because if you don't, then you're just relying on learning all of that on the job, which is a great place to do it, but you might not learn the theory behind it. So I feel like if you don't do the basic homework regularly, and if you don't make learning part of your regular routine, then I think it's very difficult to move forward. And I see people getting stuck right there at the very start. Yeah. It's, uh, it's also connected to this attitude of no, like thinking you know it all yeah. and I actually don't need to learn anything anymore. But I think another thing that is really important and it's, it's as basic as it, as it gets, it's, it applies to pretty much every job where you can have a career, is just being dependable and actually being responsible yeah. 
uh, for your own conduct. And uh, if, you, if somebody tells you, hey, can you, like, can you finish this for me and how long will it actually take, uh, actually giving a realistic answer and then like doing everything you can to actually fulfill that request. Because uh, like this is uh, one of the easiest ways to kind of like get like on a, you know, like a, like a dead end track uh, when people give you jobs and you don't actually perform and you can't get it done in time. I mean, and you don't yeah. give them a warning on the way that yeah. you're going to be late. It's like the, the day before the pitch presentation, it's like, oh, I actually didn't finish any of the didn't work. Start. You, yeah, I didn't actually start. I had stuff to do. Don't have a laptop. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, if there's anything that blocks you from actually achieving results for your company or your team, you have to bring that point up because I mean, nobody will be able to, nobody's going to look out for every junior if they're, you know, like doing a good job. I mean, you, you are now working and you are responsible for doing that yourself. Yeah. It's a really, really good point. I yeah. think that I think yeah, a lot of uh, one. I think a piece of career advice in general is that uh, you shouldn't rely on the company to solve your problems for you because the company is just one place where you are at right now, but your career is you. And I think what I've noticed with people who tend to take a long time to move forward is that they plug into the company's systems and they get irritated when they're not getting what they want from the company that they're in. And instead of just learning and asking questions and trying to make the best out of it, they just start to get annoyed mm -hmm. and start to complain and start to like be like, oh, fuck, you know, this company sucks and like, yeah. oh, they're never gonna recognize me. And it's like the, the stupid thing about thinking like this is that really, You'll, fulfilling yeah, prophecy. you'll be at a yeah. different company eventually and then you'll be starting that from scratch. This company entity doesn't exist. It's really you mm. in a place that's paying you some money while you're trying to figure your shit out and you need to be the person who has like the proactive mindset to figure this stuff out for yourself. And I think relying on the company to figure out where you should go next. So I, I, I mean, that's one thing that I think that when I speak to people who are very frustrated about where they are, they spend more time thinking about how to talk about how frustrated they are about where they are than actually trying to learn how to get out of it. So I think that that's one thing as well is really, I mean, my point is really messy now, but it's that you shouldn't sit around being frustrated, being a junior, being at a company and being pissed with the company when you have the option to go everywhere in the world to any company you want and it's really just your career and your mm. personal skill set that you yeah. need to work on. Also, I mean, uh, nobody wants to give cool projects to people who, who are resentful and uh, unpleasant to work with. Yeah. And um, that's, just, uh, yeah, that's just the way it is. That's, um, that's also another thing. Yeah. I mean, that's like, a, I think uh, one thing that I've noticed from juniors who are successful is that they are humble about asking questions. Mm. So a good, a, a junior that I know is going to be on a path to success is a person who really asks the right questions and asks the, and really and, and it's not just you know think getting pissed and angry about something that's not working but they're going to people who they know have the answers and they're saying hey look uh, one thing that I'm really struggling with in the company right now is this this and this what would be your advice to get there you never you almost never hear people doing this and mm. when they do I'm like this person is going to be so fast up the career ladder and I think that's a really really interesting Thing, simple hack is really when you join a company going up to people don't go up to Tim and say hey how do you turn on flat how do you turn on a laptop or something or where do I yeah, I don't know don't go up to Tim that. and ask him you that can you can that. you can do it but go up to Tim and say hey look um what like when you were kind of moving from junior to senior what were so you know like these kind of questions that we're now talking about in this YouTube video you can ask people in your company and the crazy thing is no one does this it's so mm. weird mm. juniors are people who are struggling within companies they often tend to go inside themselves mm. and rather complain with other juniors than actually try to get advice from the people ahead of them. Me today, I'm a, I've been in the design industry for 10 years, I still ask people like, hey, I don't really know how to do this. How would I do this? How would I do this? And I think it's don't worry about looking stupid because 
as a junior, no one expects you to know this stuff yeah. anyway. So it's good to just use that opportunity to ask the questions. Right. Yeah. Still also, just rambling. Yeah. Also, also uh, makes you seem a lot more motivated to, yes. to learn stuff. Yeah. And uh, it's it's more enjoyable to work with people like that. Yeah. And uh, almost like rewarding them with, uh, in, in, like, for example, asking them to come come to a client. Yeah. And this is um, uh, maybe another thing that a lot of junior designers are maybe tempted to, you know, like, do too many different things at once and never really becoming good at one thing. Yeah. So I think you should really think about like how you can contribute the biggest value in your company. Like, for example, I mean, I'm assuming that you're already a really, really good designer um, and that you're doing a really good job um, building skills on top of that and not just, you know, like I, you know, like doing like a mini course on uh, web development and then it's yeah. like this thing that like it's a skill that nobody can really use like you're not really developing it But if you want to do if you want to go down that that route then really commit to it become really really good at it yeah. um, But then maybe you won't have time for example to think about like how can I learn to present my ideas? so maybe that's already like where your career will have like different branches and um, I don't think like you can try things you can try things if you don't like them no worry you tried it maybe it's not your thing but then you can focus on other things that you enjoy like uh, for example presenting ideas uh, helping helping your senior designers with making deliverables ready for developers or things like that and um, if you are then kind of like developing these skills into something that is really solid and people can trust you to deliver on that that's also going to be a huge bonus I think um, because that is really really rare like having somebody who's extremely skilled at their job but they're also able to perform in other functions that yeah. that are related to that and bring value to the company as well. So maybe to wrap it up I'm gonna ask Tim one last question so what would you say for anyone who's watching this video who feels like they're they're really stuck as in they've been a junior for over two years mm -hmm. And they're kind of they they're watching this and they're they're like yeah but I am annoyed like everywhere I go I'm a junior like what would you say to someone like that I mean I think one good way of approaching this could be to think of where do you actually want to be because I mean it, it's like nobody's going to hand you any kind of like promotion you actually have to make a case why for example you deserve to be um, you know, like a mid-level designer or something like that. So I would really just take a sheet of paper, just almost like write bullet points on what is it I'm actually, what, what do I actually want out of my next career step and then see how you can get there. Maybe you will not really get there a hundred percent, but at least it will give you like some direction. And um, honestly, I mean, one, one thing also to consider is really if you feel stuck, maybe really just look for something else. I mean, it's sometimes really good to get out of your surroundings and try something different, experience another work culture, um, maybe think about, you know, like talking to other designers from other companies, going to meetups, all of these things. It's, uh, it's I think nowadays it's so, it's so much easier to find a new job totally. because you can actually like go to some kind of conference and talk to executive creative directors from giant agencies. And I actually know a couple of people who found new jobs doing exactly that. So um, this is one one thing, uh, yeah, I I would do. I mean, I think um, it's, it's better to change your situation than being like completely frustrated in it. Likewise, if you think, I actually don't want to have like this crazy career. I don't want to become a creative director. I'm happy doing my, my design work. Uh, that's also completely fine, but then don't be resentful that other people will kind of like pass pass you by and in terms of salary and yeah, yeah, titles. exactly. Yeah. So this is um just also like a trade off that you have to decide if it's worth it. Like if you want to have a less stressful career with less responsibilities, more free time for your own things, uh, the trade off is that you will not actually reach like a higher level of of you know like your career. Um, so this is. Uh, this is such a downer. Yeah, I think <laughs> the, only, the only thing I would say is that it's good to understand if you, if you are feeling stuck, try to be real about what you're not good at. And what I would do is in the company that I'm working at, even though you've probably built up a lot of frustration and you don't trust the people working there anymore, I would try to find someone I trust or try to find a designer and just say, look, I realize that I'm not moving forward. And, what, and I'm not asking you to give me any solutions. What I'm asking you is to tell me 
what do you think that I am very weak at? What are my weaknesses as a designer? And you might find out that some of those things are built into your personality. For me, one weakness that I have is I'm not detail oriented. I'm a person who's very easily distracted. There's a bird right there. I don't like working on small details. So I would never be a great kind of UI designer because I don't care about the pixels. I don't care if something is like this or whatever. So I think that, you know, if I didn't know that, then I might be stuck in my career. And, and now I've figured out that I like strategy, so I've gone around. So what I would do if you're stuck or if you're feeling stuck is to ask people, try to get an honest answer around what are you not good at? And if you cannot act offensive when someone tells you, well, you kind of don't understand this or this or this, um, don't even answer back. Sometimes people ask me what are questions like that and then I give them the answer and they're like, yeah, well, I didn't have time because, well, you know, well, so don't, don't act like that. Just accept it and try to understand that you might have something in your personality that's just blocking you from going forward, which you might not need to deal with. There just might be another path for you. Thanks so much for watching this extremely long video about junior, senior UX designers. We hope you enjoyed it. Give it a like if you did and make sure you leave a comment down below. Let us know what situation you are in. Let us know if you're a senior, let us know if you're a junior and also let us know what your opinion for moving up the ladder in terms of career is. We'd love to hear that as well in the comments. We also have a lot of other content coming out every week. We've got a weekly podcast every Monday called the Product Breakfast Club. Get it on any podcast app you have. We have daily vlogs on Instagram at AJ Smart Design. Check that out. And we've got just a ton of stuff going on in our Facebook groups, uh, our main Facebook group called Innovation Hackers. If you want to uh, connect with other designers, it's a great thing to check out. So really hope you enjoy that. Thanks so much for your time and have a great day. So in this video, if we can get through it with this bird outside going crazy like the, all the doors are closed but we can still hear this bird be like Tim's in the toilet <laughs> <clears throat> I think the is bird is birds? okay it's there's a bird but it's there fine. are birds okay. everywhere there's a bird right there you don't need to no I want to do it again okay I want to do the do over hi man <laughs> 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 okay. He's <coughs> 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 hurt. Okay, I'll. Yeah, it's it's not a bit. Tim, can you do that again, please? Yeah, of course. Hi, my name is Tim. I'm a product design director at Agent Smart. Um, I've been in the design industry for over ten years and uh, worked in different agencies, companies, uh, places as a freelancer as well. And um, yeah, <laughs> what is think, this, what is I the point of? The